Welcome back, everyone, to Pop Scream, our day full of Halloween-themed panels and fun from your friends at Pop Stream, Pop Culture Classroom, and Denver Pop Culture Con. I'm your host for this panel, Matt Slater. You can find me at Maddie Slay on Twitter and Twitch. And with me for this session, the amazing Tajan Campbell, making her return. And then uh, we are also joined by my good friend, artist, cosplayer, and cast member of from Pop Stream Comics, Tara Necessary. Tara, how are you today? Good, good. Or should I ask who are Halloween. you today? Uh, I'm kind of Sailor Moon. <laughs> it's like casual Sailor Moon. <laughs> I it's like, like a that. bounding. Like You're bounding yeah. Sailor yeah. Moon. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I do have yeah. my buns. They're just very small. <laughs> nice. Well, today, or for this session on Pop Scream, we're going to be doing some masks and makeup fun. So Tara is going to be demoing three different makeup looks for us that we can use to go with a mask. And for two of them, Tayshin and I will be following step by step um, and seeing how well we can recreate these looks, which is what we have lying around the house. Um, I did make a trip to Walmart, to be fair, but it was like a $12 makeup palette. So it's essentially what you could have. I didn't buy anything. I had everything around, so. And I'm trying to get everything me. so that, yeah, it, the most you would have to go to, like, maybe a Halloween store. I think the most advanced stuff I have is liquid latex. And everything from there you can get at grocery store, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, that kind of real, real easy to get stuff. Perfect. So if you are just tuning in, this is Pop Scream, a full day of Halloween celebration and panels from Denver Pop Culture Con and Pop Culture Classroom. We are currently live on Denver Pop Culture Con and Pop Culture Classroom's Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube channels, as well as the YouTube and Twitch channels for Pop Stream. Uh, if you're watching live, you get to be a part of the show. You can let your voice be heard. You can chat with the community, feed uh, Tajan and I questions for our guest, Tara. Um, Mock or Matt you can and I, I put on makeup. Yes, that too. That's definitely what needs to happen. Um, <laughs> but you get to be part of the session and let your answer or your questions and your voice be heard. And if you enjoy this content, please make sure to subscribe to Pop Stream. So again, the Pop Stream team is bringing you Pop Scream today. We've only messed it up a couple of times, so I'm <laughs> feeling pretty good. Um, but make sure you subscribe to Pop Stream on YouTube and podcast services because all of our content is on demand on both of those channels. Um, and you can check out some of our previous weekly content. So just yesterday, we had the AV Club cast talking about horror adaptations with our special guest, Michaela Daniels. Um, but today with Pop Scream, we still have lots of cool things to come after this panel. Uh, Tayshia and I will be talking to the TV guidance counselor, Ken Reed, talking about Halloween TV in 1990. Um, and then the Pop Stream AV Club cast will be making a return to stream the game of Phasmophobia, and I am terrified. I wanted to stream something just kind of spooky, like middle, Little Nightmares, and they were like, nah, all in, horror, ghost hunting, let's go. Um, let's so if see you if we can get this, Matt to scream on a live stream. Oh, I absolutely will. And I hope that uh, Liz has her button, uh, her finger on like the sensor button because I can't <laughs> promise no swear words won't come out. I will do my best. But it will um, fly. <laughs> but right now we're putting together some looks and Tara has three looks for us today. Um, and so this first one that we're doing, actually just tell us about this first look, Tara. So the first look we're going to do is Kakashi from Naruto. Um, for the makeup, what you would need, we're going to use liquid latex toilet paper and then you want something to control that stuff with um i'm going to be using a uh little putty plastic knife and a craft brush not a makeup brush it will destroy your makeup brushes um and then you also want a black and red kind of uh eyeshadow eyeliner the one thing you want to be careful of is not all red makeup is eye safe. A lot of times, you know, you can wear lipstick on your eyes. You might not want to because of the texture, but it's safe. In red is one you have to be careful for because the way red is made, it's actually very, very tiny crushed up needle a lot of times. And that can get in your eyes and irritate your eyes if you have sensitive It's crushed up what? Beetles. Beetles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that that's what they put in like red Starbucks drinks, right? Or yep, at least once upon a time they did. Red it, it is crushed up beetles until, yeah, like five years ago they got a synthetic one. Which is why you <laughs> can now get safe red eye makeup a lot easier. Um, but with the red, just do be care very careful that you're getting something for eye 
um, or you're being very careful with it. Cause I'm like, not, I'm not going to lie. That's the scariest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> Ooh, happy Halloween. Yeah. You've, yeah. It's like the, the, they take their shells and like grind them up. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a whole horror vein of like where we get stuff from. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and have my Kakashi model get on. And this is Sarah. She's also in the atomic pixies. Hi Sarah. Um, and I will also tell you guys how to make for the last step, a, um, headband and faux wig in a pinch um i already made that so i'll just go over it real quick All now right. if, if i knew nothing about naruto i've read one volume so i know a little bit why is this the character why is this the character that we're choosing uh for today so he always has his mask on always 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 it is there's literally a joke episode where they spend the whole episode trying to get his mask off and it doesn't work. And they all fantasize about what he has under the mask. And that <laughs> I think the manga finally showed it like the last couple of chapters or something. All right. So I'm going to start with my liquid latex. I poured a little bit out into a little cup. Um, and you only want to put out a little bit because liquid latex dries. So you don't want it to get um, too tacky. Crappy. Yeah. Um, you don't want to waste it. So, like I said, Kakashi always wears his mask. Black or blue is fine for Kakashi. Um, and I'm going to go. So, Sarah has a notched eyebrow. It's not quite where it goes, but I'm going to go ahead and use that already so I don't get it in her eyebrow. And I'm going to lay down at first just like one thin layer. I'm going to pull down a little bit to come down, but I'm not going to worry about taking it all the way down because she's going to have her mask on. And for anybody, if you've never used liquid latex, it's a very versatile product that you can use for lots of different makeup effects. Yeah. We're actually going to use it for all of these, although you wouldn't need it for all those. And I'll go over some alternatives. And easy to find because it is going to be at Spirit. And we all know this time of year that Spirit stores crop up everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So you throw a rock outside, you're going to find a Spirit. <laughs> and then I want to build up a little texture. So to do that, I'm going to take a little tiny, tiny amount of toilet paper and I'm going to roll it up and I'm going to place it into the middle of it. And the liquid latex at this point is getting to be tacky. So I can just lay stuff on top of it. I want to go too close to her eye because I don't want, just feels weird. It's probably not great for your eye either, but mainly it's just that it just starts to feel weird. Well, and as your eyelids move, it could affect how it sticks, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you need to hold anything? No, no. <laughs> and Tara, I'm just going to ask you questions while you're doing this. Let me know yeah. if you need me to shut up. But earlier you mentioned the Atomic Pixies. For those who don't know who that is, who, who are the Atomic Pixies? So the Atomic Pixies are me, my lovely roommate and best friend, Sarah, and my wife, B, who will be my model in the next one. And we make Art Nerdvaux, which is art, um, art Nouveau and pop culture squished together. Um, we make prints, comics, enamel pens, and all sorts of stuff. And we, during a normal year, go around at conventions and sell that. Obviously, that's not happening this year. All right, so I got all the toilet paper on there. And now I'm just taking my liquid latex and I'm like smoothing it out. And once it dries, the liquid latex will be clear and the toilet paper will have a little bit of color. But I'm making it so that the toilet paper is entirely encased in the liquid latex. Okay, so you're putting the latex over that toilet paper over, that you laid over down. that toilet paper. Okay. Yeah. Sarah, how long can you expect it to stay on? Does it really stay on until you pull it off, or yeah, is it'll, that a off it. it'll stay on for a good while. Like it's definitely long enough to go trick or treating, to a party, to a con. Um, now, like Matt said, and I did get a little close up here when it's in places that creases that does become harder for it to hold on to. Like the more the skin moves and stuff and flexes underneath it, the harder that grab is going to be. You can do things to prep your skin underneath if you know you're going to be like, you're doing two face makeup around your mouth. So you know, it's going to be moving. You can do some things to kind of secure it down more. Mm. So that is something that if you want to do more intense makeup, there definitely are options. All right, well, that dries. I'm going to work on her makeup on her other eye. And so a little history on Kakashi. Uh, in the story, his left eye was ripped out when he was a kid and a magical oh. red eye was put in called a Sharingan. If you're hardcore doing it, you can actually go buy a Sharingan uh, uh, 
contact lens and have that. They, they do sell those. Um, but I'm assuming that you guys aren't going to go out and buy a $40 contact lens for this tonight. So what we do a lot of times is when we need different colored eyes, we just do it with the makeup. Um, the simplest way, if you're like not wanting any makeup in your face at all to do it is just to do black eyeliner on one eye, red eyeliner on the other, mm -hmm. and it'll just give that vibe. Um, and mm -hmm. eyeliner will never make you look like you have on a ton of makeup. It'll just make your eyes look nice. So if you're someone who's like, I don't want to put on tons and tons of stuff, you can just put that on real simply. Um, I'm actually going to do the red side with um, red makeup to show how to do it a little bit more vividly. But on this side, I'm just going to do the eyeliner. So if you are watching this and you've never done eyeliner in your life, you kind of see how it goes. <laughs> That was always my favorite part of doing high school drama was when the boys had to put on eyeliner for the first time and the, the watery eyes, the like, they run away right. from you as you get close to them because they're convinced you're going to jab it in their eye. We, right. we literally had like two people with like all the boys just in a line mm -hmm. and then they would come and do all of our eyeliner. And let me tell you, if you're someone who is not into makeup, I totally get it. But no matter your gender, a little eyeliner, a little mascara, and a little lip gloss makes everybody look a little bit more. More. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm poking her in the eye. I'm what the, the high school drama boys were afraid of. I feel like even that simple will make your eye feel heavier and darker, especially mm -hmm. when you contrast it with not having the eyeliner on the other side. Sorry, my contact. <laughs> and then I killed it. Okay, let me see how. Uh, ideally, you'd want it to dry a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and do her eye makeup. I might have to touch it up a little at the end um, just to give it a little bit more. So like I said, with the eye makeup, do be careful about the red you buy. Now, this is a fancy-ish palette that you'd have to order offline. Um, but you can find reds now because like Tasia brought up, they have gotten, or I think Matt brought up, they have gotten better red, so it's not as rare to find. So you uh, have beetle eyes. Yeah, you so don't have that beetle, beetle eyes. eyes. And if you don't have sensitive eyes, it is pretty okay to use a little bit of blush or something too. But mm -hmm. if you have sensitive eyes, you want to be very careful about that. So for this, I want to make it pretty dramatic. I'm going to cover her whole eyelid. So when her eyes closed, I'm going to cover every bit of it. And then because I'm not, this is not necessarily beauty makeup, although I don't think this looks lovely. I'm not trying to make her look pretty um, or I think it can look lovely. I'm going to go underneath Oh, okay, so just a little bit on that bottom lid. Yeah, because you're not trying to make it look like you have red eyeshadow on. You're trying to make them look at your eye and think about the color red. Sure. And I'm actually going to put it, go ahead and, yeah, a little bit vivider. So, yeah, and what I go for is I'm covering the, the ball part of the eyelid. So when you're looking at somebody's makeup and they close their eyes, you can see the part that's the ball. So both on mm. the bottom and the top, I'm covering where the eyeball is. And that'll, that'll help make it look less, especially if you just do one solid color like this, it'll look less like a makeup look and more like I have a red eye. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this is dry enough. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take cover up and I'm going to make it look flesh colored and not toilet paper colored. <laughs> um, and the nice thing about latex is once it dries, you can put really anything on top of it makeup paint wise um and you can i mean i do not recommend it but you can even use paint obviously you would not pull your nose down if you're trying to social distance but you're probably either doing this on yourself or someone so you when can. you're when you're doing your makeup prep you're usually doing that alone with your yeah, you know, yeah you're not usually with the people you live with we do live together yeah yeah <laughs> we, are, we are definitely safe but if your friend at the bar needs to touch it, well, don't go to a bar either. But <laughs> <laughs> now you right. said cover up. So if I didn't have this at home, would I just go and look for a cover up close to my skin tone? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just any kind of, this is, this is just like, okay, actually this is a very fancy one, but you can just buy this kind of cover up concealer at Target or Walgreens or whatever. 
All right, and then the last thing I want to do is now that I've got it fleshy, it's popping pretty well, but I want to give it a little bit more volume. So this is just a regular eyeshadow palette, has like a brown and a gold. These ones are shimmery. If you want matte and you don't want it to be shimmery, keep an eye out for that. Everyone could use a little bit of shimmer. Right? I'm like, <laughs> or don't, be, don't be a coward and be a shimmer ninja. Mm -hmm. And just real lightly brush a little bit on so it has a little bit of texture to it so that it doesn't look solid concealer color, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, this is also, you can add, like if you have want a bigger or nastier kind of scar, you can mess with that toilet paper and make different shapes. You can, while I was putting it on, you can mesh it around and like open it up. Like say you wanted something that was oozing, you could open it up and put a little blood in there and stuff. So his scar is very clean and healed but you can go a lot more intense with it, with this technique. And the last thing we're gonna do is, since it's not a toe, of course we need ridiculous anime hair. So the way <laughs> I made this, this is a tie, like a, a man's tie. Nice. Um, and then I just used foam. You could also use paper, paper's not gonna last as well. And you see, I just cut out spikes, glued it on the back. Same thing, just drew the symbol on there with marker. And that's just uh, like a gray foam rectangle? Yep, just a big piece of uh, white foam, but yep. Mm. So again, oh, so yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Walmart. Yep. Yeah. Find it on the craft aisle. <laughs> and this is real, like one thing to think about, especially with anime characters is like, their hair does not look like hair. So you don't necessarily have to make it with hair pieces. Like it is also, if you're planning ahead, you can just go grab a Kakashi wig for like 20 bucks off ebay or whatever but like it doesn't need to look like hair a lot of the best ridiculous anime wigs i've seen have been made out of non-wig material like foam mm. you know using foam to make like those the shape right and yeah and stuff yeah so it defies gravity so. yeah <laughs> and we happen to have a, a green vest around green kind of hiking or hunting vest work great um you can also get official vests I bet Hot Topic has them right now. Um, but you can also <laughs> just wear like bra, black clothes and just cut up like a gray t or a green t-shirt and pull it over too and just cut it down the middle. So here is our DIY Kakashi. <laughs> Thank you so yes. much, Sarah. Done in like 15 minutes. <laughs> yes. If well, that, that's and awesome. The, the, the headpiece was to be fair about uh, another 15 minutes and a couple burned fingers. Please, if you're using <laughs> hot glue, remember to be careful and not touch it till it's dry. Hot glue is no joke. Mm -mm. Hot glue will will get you. I, I just assume that to be part of my experience. Like yeah. when I say when I say I'm gonna use hot glue, I that's just something that's gonna happen. Yep, yep. Uh, my first cosplay I made was actually Sailor Moon, and I was on the phone with a friend of mine, and she was telling me a joke, and I had my hot glue gun. And she's telling me the joke and right as the punchline hit, I wasn't paying attention. A big old drop fell on my leg and I start screaming. <laughs> and she goes, I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was that bad a joke. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, oh wait, so are we doing unicorn now? This is unicorn, yep. Okay. So the I, first I, thing I made, the first thing with the unicorn is, I want to show this horn I made. This is, yep, Matt has perfect. I was going to say, you can buy them really easy. And this is pretty easy to make for a craft store. This is Fimo clay. Just take it, you warm it up, and then you just twist it up into a shape, just like bloop. You can make demon horns this way, you can make cat ears this way, and then you just put it in your oven, and it cooks for like, I don't know, 45 minutes or something, and then, like this is hard as stone. Oh. So Fim okay if you need little props, and if especially if they're organic looking like horns or leaves or stuff like that, Fim okay is really useful and pretty easy to use. Um, the one thing to watch out for is if you have animals, it finds any piece of fur you have in the area and makes it part of it. So <laughs> if you are being- It makes so, it more authentic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, that's what also like this one got burned and we were just like, but that just makes it look more natural. <laughs> so like, so I, I would say, especially for things that are organic, Fimo clay is organic and small. Um, and then we just wired it to a headband, but like Matt so perfectly showed, <laughs> five dollars no. at walmart today I say Matt bought his, so. I but hey we always say with cosplay no matter how you acquire your pieces it doesn't matter 
except when Matt does it. And then we give him a hard time for having to buy a corn at Walmart. Look, I my Rick and Morty unicorn Morty corn horn <laughs> I had thrown away. So I had to figure out something else. All right. So if you don't want to do a horn for whatever reason, maybe you can't have a headband or something. The other really cool thing, and this is really cool just for makeup, for any kind of looks. I'm going to bring a chair over here, actually, is using a gemstone. And I'm going to show you how to attach this to your forehead, but there are three different ways to do it. You can use liquid latex, which is what we're going to do. You can also use eyelash glue. Eyelash glue is super easily available. And for putting little tiny things on your face, like gemstones or fake flowers or spikes or anything like that, it can be really useful if it's a lightweight sort of thing. I think is this we'll pop this guy off so you don't have to keep. We usually pin him. That'll be the end, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the last thing, if your skin is not that uh, sensitive, this can bother people with sensitive skin, but also like Elmer's glue sticks mm -hmm. do awesome things for makeup. They're also like, if you want to put down your eyebrows to cover them, get rid of them or make like crazy, like Cruella de Vil eyebrows, you can glue stick them down and then put um, cover up on like I did with the um, scar on Kakashi. Mm -hmm. you do that same thing to get rid of your eyebrows. I've got some... Uh probably four-year-old spirit gum that my husband assures me is still good. Oh, yeah. Uh, if, if, when it's not good, you can't use it. When it's not yeah. solid. So right. yeah, spirit gum is another good way to do it. Spirit gum does a lot of what, like, it doesn't build the same way liquid latex does, but if you're looking to, like, secure things and stuff, spirit gum is sometimes better at it than liquid latex. And it's again, spirit gum you can find at any of your Halloween stores. You just have to be careful because sometimes when spirit gum glues it down, it's down. Spirit gum is down. Yes. Yeah, it's time to get it off. Like if you know your latex is going to move, you put spirit gum underneath it and yeah, mm. then it don't move. Um, but that's also good to know because latex is something people are allergic to. So that's also a good reason to know that. And um, also with scars, if you're allergic, I forgot to add this on, but if you're allergic with, oh, cause I was going to say it during the zombie, but um. If you're allergic to liquid latex or any kind of latex, you can also Google a way to make a scar with Vaseline. So oh. something to keep in mind if you have a latex allergy. All right, so last unicorn style, we've gone ahead and put that there. Um, and now I'm gonna go crazy and we're gonna just go really dramatic. She is going to lean in towards glamor makeup and we're gonna go really dramatic sparkle princess with this. Okay, so I'm following along with you, Tara. So <laughs> what, what are you painting first? So first, we're going to use your lightest color that you have. Mine is white. And you're going to put that all over the island. Okay. This is the best part of my day. The first part <laughs> is I have to get the dang thing open. I did not prep that. And this is okay. going to obviously be more unicorn inspired because I cannot make you look like a horse. <laughs> okay. That'll go on at the end. Also, this is the manager of the Atomic Pixies and my wife. We've been together for 20 years next tw year. 20 years next year. Wow. Good for you guys. Yep, we met my freshman year of high school. Never separated. All right. So the reason you put down the light color is this is making like a palette for you to put the rest of your makeup on. Um, with a unicorn, you also might show the white because that's appropriate. But whether you show the white or not, it's really good to put down a light color if you want dramatic colors because that gives them their popping out on white instead of on your skin. Um, and Matt's using like a cream white and that is really, really good. If you want really dramatic, a cream white, which is like clown makeup kind of on the, the one end is going to do like- What'd you call me? Like, I called you a clown. <laughs> That's going to give you that like vivid colors that you see on makeup artists. They put that solid cream white down first. So that's why we put down our white. And like, I'm just using a powder white. So you, it doesn't have to be that cream, but that is the like perfect canvas for it. And then I'm going to go to my next darkest color. And I'm going to do, I'm going to start in the corner and brush it across the whole eyelid uh, not quite all the way. I'm leaving a little bit of white in that corner. So I'm going to go for this nice little pale blue. 
Good, good. Because my mask that I bought today is, you may not be able to make me look like a horse, but I can look like a rainbow zebra. So. Yes! <laughs> I did not have a mirror available for this. So I'm using my iPad and it's not, I wouldn't recommend it. Does weird mirroring stuff, yes. not the best. And then we're gonna go again, another shade darker. This would also be, I'm going pretty much dark pink, pink, pink to darker pink to purple. But if you were doing a contrast color, like you wanted to go from like pink to suddenly dark or darker blue, this would be a good time to transition. Okay. Uh, but this is, so we have our white, then our light tone, then our mid tone. So again, starting at the edge, I pull this one about halfway and then I cover the whole eyelid again. All right, I'm getting into my glittery blues here. I'm excited. These are such pretty colors. The The little girl that grew up with Lisa Frank and me is squealing on the inside. <laughs> I did. So this is a, this is a hip dot brand. Um, by Meatball, mm. their collection by Meatball, and I love it. If you're into makeup, it is so good. Oh, they're so pretty. And also, I know I, I I've met Meatball, and she is the sweetest person. And supporting her is definitely not a bad idea. Matt, that fade is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're looking awesome. Trying to get some blending here. Now, one thing to watch for, I just did it. If you're coming in from the inside, sometimes your brush can flick and put powder on the nose, especially if you have really loose makeup. And what you can do if it's doing that is just get like some tissue paper or a piece of paper and put it there when you're doing it. And that'll just protect the nose. All right. Then I'm gonna do my last color. And for my last color, I'm gonna switch to this purple. And I am just going on the eyelid. Now, Tara, do you feel that if you have someone who can help you, it's easier to have someone put the makeup on for you? Um, I think it's six, half a dozen. Some people are really comfortable putting makeup on other people. Some people are not at all. So mm -hmm. if they balk at it, don't push them. <laughs> like, but if they're like, heck yeah. I, That's it's just really bad hard. for everyone because then everyone's nervous because yeah. they got pushed into doing your makeup. Yeah, I've watched enough RuPaul's Drag Race to know that doing makeup on yourself and on someone else are completely different skills. Very mm -hmm. different, yep. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to do with Bev because she has already um, not real hair color, I'm going to take a little bit of this purple and I'm going to brush it into her brows to give her purple eyebrows. That is up to personal preference and what color hair you have, but I know this one likes having crazy colored eyebrows. So, all right. Now, I want her to have a little bit of blush, so I'm going to tug this down. I'm just going to use my eyeshadow for the blush so that I can get this really cartoony pink because I don't have a blush that color. And that's something good to keep in mind, especially if you're doing cosplays that are like not necessarily human colored people or mm -hmm. human effects. This stuff is pretty much the same as blush. You can use any of these colors as blush. Um, it's a little slightly different chemically, but not so much that it's anything to worry about. I think so often when people first start cosplaying, they worry that they're going too big or too bright or too much. And you learn pretty quickly that there's no such thing. Yep. And I love putting a little bit of blush right on the tip of the nose. Not that you can see that with mask, but I think it's just so cute. <laughs> All right. And I'm not going to do eyeliner on her necessarily because we showed it on Kakashi, but I'm going to go ahead and do a little mascara. So with mascara, you can put it on top and bottom or just top. I mean, I guess you can do just bottom too, but that's an odd choice. <laughs> no one will arrest you if you do that. <laughs> All right. 
And then for our sparkle unicorn, we need sparkles. Lots oh, of sparkles. So any, any glitter can be turned into body glitter with aloe vera. One thing to look out for, though, is that glitter is both pretty bad for the environment. So if you can get biodegradable glitter, that is always ace. Um, and also not all glitter is safe to be around your eyes, your mouth, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So when you're buying glitter, make sure, just make sure that you're buying something, you know, and adults, obviously, it's less important than little ones to make sure it's totally, totally safe. Um, but this is cosmetic grade. I got like 20 cool little pots off Amazon for like 10 bucks or something. Um, and I'm going to have you hold the glitter for me for a second. And then when you have glitter on hand, it's amazing how many times you can find reasons to use glitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially now, and like you guys can see, these ones are a lot more subtle, but like um, these are like glitter freckles. And that's like all the thing nowadays is to have glitter freckles. And that's what we're going to do with her. So you want aloe vera. Put, actually, I'm going to give Matt a second to catch up. Oh, no, you're good. Oh. I'm just... I would say I'm being a perfectionist, but uh, looking at me right now, I, mean, I don't know if that's the word I would use. Amazing. So <laughs> I put a little bit on your hand like this. And then I see that aloe vera is used too much. It is great for your skin. All right. First, you're going to rub it on the place you want it to be. With masks, I recommend right here under the eye. And then you can do also like right here above the eye. And the nice thing about the aloe vera is it's not going to mess up your makeup. Mm -hmm. Then, with your fingers still a little bit damp from the aloe vera, dip it into the glitter and just soothe it on. Now, if I don't have aloe vera on hand, would something like Vaseline be so an that acceptable substitute? Works really well to keep the glitter on. It will mess up the makeup underneath. So just be mm -hmm. careful with it and where you're putting it. Got it. Okay. Like if you've ever seen me with my blush and it's like splotchy under them, that that's what was going on. <laughs> it also, depending if your mate, if your glitter has color, it can sometimes transfer the color to your cheeks, which can be cool actually, but just like, don't be freaked out if you don't use it. And then there's like little heart shapes on your face. Like, all right. You can do that with any glitter. And the reason you want to do put it on the face and then put your finger in is because glitter is called craft herpes for a reason. It gets everywhere. So you only want to use a tiny, tiny amount. If you know you're going to be using glitter a lot or you want to mix up like um, different kinds and make like a custom glitter mix, you can buy these little tubes. You mix um, aloe vera and then with this, you want to put in a little glycerin to help it keep mm. Which you can also use glycerin to get it to stick to your skin, but glycerin is just more expensive and feels not as great. So aloe vera mm -hmm. is better. But if you mix that up, you can make your own custom oh. glitter. And same thing, just dip it. Everyone looks so sparkly. Yep. Sparkle. And also, if you're doing this with a mask, not but you can bedazzle the mask too with some hot glue and some gemstones and stuff like that I've seen some really fabulous examples of that right. and then we'll add our little unicorn horn and there is another unicorn everyone looks fantastic all yeah. right and Here, okay. water and then we're gonna have our zombie step into the chair I actually will sit in the chair. So, yeah, you should probably sit. Not. And our zombie is my beautiful mother. You can all tell. Yep. All right. Matt, you look amazing. Thank you. I, If I were a unicorn, I, I think this is pretty close to how I would look. All right. Oh, in fact, I'm going to use it, your chair. Matt, it didn't seem too difficult. Did you have a hard time following along? Honestly, the hardest thing that I had trouble with was just doing my makeup in a webcam. 
Um, right. <laughs> uh, but no, it's uh, you layer your eyeshadow. So just like you would layer with any art, you want to go light to dark, right? It mm -hmm. seems like the main thing. Um, and then put your glitter on. So, you know, it seemed pretty Very simple enough hard. for a uh, male that does not wear makeup. <laughs> yep. And unicorn is your time to wear so much glitter. Right. All right. So our zombie has her very good health mask. And the first thing that I want to point out is the blood we made. And we'll use this a little bit later. Um, but this blood is literally <laughs> just corn syrup and red and a little bit of green food coloring. If you just put in red, it's going to be a little too candy colored. So you put in the green to make it look dark and blood like. I've also heard Hershey's chocolate syrup. Yes, especially uh, Hershey's chocolate syrup is really, really good, too, if you're filming in black and white. Mm. Uh, it, that's what is in Psycho, the movie Psycho. Oh. Is it's chocolate. I don't think it. Oh, yeah, it probably was Hershey's back then. Um, <laughs> all right. I don't, I don't know what it says about me and those that I live with, but we had a just preset ready to go bottle of blood in the pantry. So <laughs> we got blame it spirit. Don't I just like how I was in the I, pantry. I, I, <laughs> I made this at a, at a pop culture classroom workshop, but like it was not the only take blood I had laying around. Um, the things to watch out for with this is it is very sticky. It is very sticky. It is also sweet, but it is super gross and sticky. <laughs> there's and there's no there's that that's it. You just got to deal with it being sticky. There's no trick there. <laughs> All right. So the best thing, if you have the ability to get to this kind of makeup is Ben Nye palettes. And they come, so like this is actually a bruise palette, but it is the only one I can find. Um, so we're not gonna use this because I wanna show you guys market stuff, but you would just get it. And it is like the cream makeup Matt was using. It's cream, so it's super blendable. You can go really vivid or really light with it. And you guys can see how good a bruise that made just with two colors. Um, so bruise palettes are really good for zombie and also burn palettes are pretty good for mm. zombie, although they'll be very red. Um, but a burn palette and this technique is the best way to do Freddy Krueger makeup, which is actually how oh. I learned it. <laughs> and if, if someone wanted to purchase Bin Nye, uh, which is like a theatrical makeup, mm -hmm. where could they find that? So in person, um, I think the uh, disguises on mm -hmm. Colfax and West Colfax and the Wizard's Chest on Broadway mm -hmm. will both have it. I know for sure. Um, I'm not sure about other places, but those two uh, that they'll definitely have it. So if you want to run out and grab some, um, you can also order it online at bednight.com and it's mm -hmm. all. It's all, it'll last you a million years and it's all pretty reasonably priced for what it was. Mm -hmm. The one thing you do want to watch out with it is theater makeup is very not great for your skin. So make mm -hmm. sure after you wash it, that you wash it off good and you take care of your skin a little bit because it's a lot thicker and heavier. So it doesn't sweat off during plays under big lights and stuff. Have uh, problems you can put hydrocortisone. Yeah, but you want to make sure to keep it that way. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start putting latex all over her to make her sores. So it's going to be pretty thin. And we're going to let it dry, and it'll dry pretty fast because it's pretty thin. All right, Tajan, it's your turn. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. Does Do I need, like, a layer of white or anything underneath, or nope. do I just start right with the latex? Right where you want it. I'm going to pull her down a little bit so I can do some right near the eyes. We'll just follow along. Looks like some on the forehead. And you don't – you want to be generous enough that you have it on there, but you're also putting it on – you're making just, like, a second layer of skin. So try not to – I just don't want to get in your hair. It'll be fine with what I'm doing. I have an audience here at home that is watching along with me and making faces. So that's that's an even <laughs> better component to this. And if you guys, if anyone's watching at home and you happen to be following along, um, or if you decide to use this later, make sure that you definitely tweet and uh, share and use hashtag pop screen so we can see how your makeup turned out. All right. And then same as Kakashi, I'm going to use this kind of basic palette. The colors you definitely want to have for zombie are brownish shade, a yellowish shade, and a greenish shade. Um, any kind of palette with those three shades, like I also have 
This one is even more shimmery, but has that going on. Um, that's what you're going to look for. And those are really easy to find in every kind of palette because they're also really great for day makeup. <laughs> yeah, and, and like a lot of people don't think of, you know, needing greens and yellows, but those are kind of like the undertones that come through, especially with wounds and bruises and things wounds like that. And, and sickliness. And that's what we're going to try to make it look real sick. And I'm going to give really bad advice <laughs> to any kids out there. When I used to have to fake a sick day, Oh no. <laughs> I would get green and yellow makeup to make myself look sicker. It always works. <laughs> and that's where your makeup skills were born. Yep. And now she's a professional. Yep. <laughs> I think it was a dude, it works. It'll do. So with this one, we're kind of doing the opposite of the unicorn makeup, or I mean the Kakashi makeup. In that I am going, I'm, I'm switching around to a whole bunch of palettes. Um, I am avoiding the shape. I'm like outlining the shape of the eyeball. I'm not putting makeup on it. Oops. <laughs> Roast. Sticky. <laughs> I fell behind a little bit. Tara, what did I need to put on my eyes? So we're getting green. Green. And we're outlining the eyeball to make it look like it's sunken and that eyeball is popping out. The opposite of what I did. Yeah, the exact opposite. Because <laughs> with the unicorn, we're trying to make it look alive and pretty. With this, we're trying to make it look dead and sunken. So that green, a whole bunch of that green. If your green starts getting too cartoonish, you can even it out with some brown. Or if you have the Kakashi around, also some uh, red will really make that dark. Now I see Tara, you're using brushes and Tayshin's going just like with her finger. Those are both great approaches, right? So not to call you out here, Tasia, the one problem <clears throat> if you go with your fingertips is the oil will start building up on the top of your makeup, especially with powder makeups oh. and it'll mess it up after a while. Like it's fine. Like now and then. For, for a quick and dirty, for uh, yeah. you know, some touch-ups, it's all right. And this was for full transparency because I didn't want green on all of my makeup brushes and I was too lazy to clean them off afterwards. So I was like, <laughs> we'll just go with fingers. Yeah. There you go. That is a very valid reason to do it the opposite way. <laughs> all right. And some other places, if you want to make them look more sunken, come in with the brown at the side of the temple. Oh, no, other way. Like that. Hmm. And you can also, if it shows like how hers does, and you can pull it down to make it more vivid, you can come in and do a sunken cheek by just going with that dark underneath the edge of the cheekbone. So what you're kind of doing is you're trying to make it so that they are really noticing the skull shape underneath the skin. Zombie's not quite a skull yet but you want that, that skull shape to really be apparent underneath the skin. All right, so once you've got your greens and your darks in there, you do a little bit more dramatic. And again, you can go super dramatic with this. The zombie, you could even come in here with a little bit. In fact, let me use a little bit of black and, and really make it dark because they're rotting, right? Very, very shimmery rotting. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to pause for a second and check our latex. Nope, still wet. Okay, we're going to go back to makeup. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you're going to take your light shades, your whites or your yellows, and you're going to go and you're going to put them like evil highlighter, pretty much. So like on the eyeball, on the edge of the cheek top of the nose right here the like crest of the forehead so the opposite of what you were doing before before you were making the dips darker now you're making the parts that stick out lighter your classic highlight and shadow yep uh and then we also holly on youtube says that a unicorn versus zombie fight would be pretty awesome so oh Tajian, for the post show which we won't have uh you and i virtually rumble I like it. We'll we'll <laughs> finally settle the debate between candy corn and not candy corn. Yes. <laughs> now I got to know who's on which side, though. Oh, I'm vehemently anti candy corn. <laughs> well, that works because I love candy. Corn. Was that was that producer Liz? Was she just chiming in? 
<laughs> I love that. See, the voice of God says that candy corn is good. I gotta go, y'all. <laughs> All right, so it's not quite dry over here, which you can see by it still being white, but over here I'm starting to get dry. So now I'm going to make the rotting skin. The way you do that is just kind of find the latex and pinch at it until you find a part that you can, I don't know if you guys can, oh, you can't see it stretching. And you just peel it up until you can leave it wrinkly. You can let it break so it's like a blister or a pock. Um, you can roll it if you have burns. Like I was saying with Freddy Cougar, you pretty much want to roll it to the edge so that you can paint like burned flesh underneath. So the different ways you pick and pull it, it depend on what you want to be done wrong with your person. My favorite thing about this step is that it there's no way to get it wrong, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, or it's very hard to get it wrong unless you peel it all off. That's wrong. But and if you so if you pull and something starts coming off too much, just dab a little bit more latex in there and you'll just have another really nice. You'll have to wait a couple more seconds for it to dry. But you'll get and just another nice, nasty, flappy piece. <laughs> well, about those flappy really pieces. Chemical peel. Yeah. Alive. It's great. My dog is gagging in the corner. I don't know if anybody can hear him, but he's just adding sound effects Good. to the zombie. He's like, this is disgusting, mom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So one thing about this, though, just to let you guys know, it is a little bit uncomfortable at points because this will be flush to your skin. So uh, the pi the pinching and the finding the edge to pull, if it starts to hurt, don't keep pulling at it. A little bit of discomfort is okay. You don't want to pinch your skin like it's like yoga a little bit of discomfort is good but don't hurt yourself and for those of us with fuzzy faces anywhere you're putting latex should probably be clean shaven yeah although i mean it's not you can also go in with like soap and, and mm. warm soap and water and get it off pretty easily but yeah it's gonna always it's like a band-aid so like if you're applying it to an arm or something like yeah. that just something to be aware of i'm now, a little worried about my eye that we talked about definitely have that shaved because that will rip everything out mm. latex is more like eh, if you forget it's not going to be the best makeup peel off but it's not going to be the end of the world spirit gum you will regret <laughs> i feel like most theater majors you talk to them and they have some horror story about spirit gum that they did it wrong or they knew someone who did it wrong and Glue now they're scarred and made for life uh, yeah my worst one I had was I had my chest waxed for a play that I was in in high school and they burnt me with the wax. Um, ooh, it was not good. Not pretty. I, like, did you have a professional wax your chest or were they? Yes. Oh yeah, it was a professional. Now mine, I'm going to put, you shouldn't need to, but I'm going to put a little bit because I still have some underneath that's not dry. So just so we can wrap up i'm gonna put a little bit of cover up but technically it should dry clear so you don't need to do that it'll just dry clear on her in about 10 minutes <laughs> but you can see like this area and this area that were fully dry didn't need to do that um and now you can go in and paint right on top of that so some of the painting you want to match the paint job you were working on before in the areas that are appropriate but in some areas you definitely want to go in with your little detail brush or your little detail Q-tip and get real gross and nasty up in there. And let yourself follow the, the wrinkles and the stuff you've made. Fill them out. Like, go with them, not against them. Are you using darker colors right now, Terry? I'm using the really dark brown right now with a little bit of the green in it. To get that like sunken in. Yeah, effect. nasty. Yeah. Nasty. We want nasty, gross colors. And a fun thing to do with zombies, you can kind of see, make a story for your zombie. Like my mom here is definitely a like high class lady zombie. You can't see all the outfits, but, um, and you can even get into like, how, how did this person die? Like, what caused it? You know, do they have like a stake through their middle or something like that? Mm -hmm. Like that could be a lot of the fun of zombies is making your zombie character. The and origin what, story. Mm -hmm, and that's what makes them your zombie and not zombie 823. And then the oh. last thing 
I'm going to go. I want to make her pretty oozy. So I'm going to take some of that blood again. And I'm going to use my Q-tip because I don't want to get that that much. Just a little bit to make it like red and moist and all that gross, disgusting stuff that you don't want. Uh, Ang Moore on Twitter, or sorry, on Twitch says that they really like the blood on the mask. That's a really good effect. And uh, Holly says that she's getting some Walking Dead vibes. So you guys are doing a pretty good job <laughs> if we're getting Walking Dead vibes. And that the Walking Dead is a good, like this blood is pretty fresh. If you're doing zombie, you can go even darker. And you do want to think that it's not, like I don't want to dump the whole jar. They're not still bleeding. They stopped bleeding a long time ago. It's just still gross and gooey. Mm. All right. And I think for this one, I'm going to pull my camera to a close-up because there's a lot of little details in it. I don't think I'm going to get any closer. Nobody wants to get any closer to me right <laughs> now. Yes. Uh, uh. Acting out record there. You got a little found footage horror movie too. <laughs> That's spectacular. That'll be uh -huh. our next uh, production is a, a Zoom, a Zoom zombie movie. Yes. To go with the Zoom Ghost. Have you seen the Zoom Ghost movie? Oh, I haven't. No. It's on Shutter, which you can get for free for seven days. It was really good. It's called like Host. Yeah, Host. And it was great because it's it's 45 minutes long. It's a free Zoom meeting. And like the <laughs> tension as it starts being like, your meeting's up in 10 minutes. Are you going to start a new meeting? And just knowing that like, no matter what happens, you're done in 10 minutes. And be oh like, gosh. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, great. Something that so many of us can relate to. Yeah. So there is three different looks and hopefully a lot of things in those looks that you can kind of take apart to make your own looks. Um, do remember, like I said, with theater makeup to be very kind to your skin afterwards. Um, we do like uh, apple cider vinegar and green tea to like wash stuff off. And then like a nice light lotion or like those Korean face masks that are so popular are great. Something just to give it a lot of moisture after you get it really, really clean. It's uh, a good excuse to do some nice self-care, like exactly. give yourself a little spa day. Self-care scareween. <laughs> I love that. Now, Tara, these were obviously like the quick and dirty. We did three looks in, in an hour. If someone wanted to maybe punch up their look, add a little bit more detail, especially the zombie look, because I think that's probably the one that you could add the most to, what would you suggest doing to take it to the next level? So with the zombie especially, I think the next level that you'd want to be looking at would be uh, buying or making some kind of really good, like a really good specific wound and building up that character. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you know, did they get their arm ripped off or, and there are so many cool DIY, like broken limbs, mm. uh, things that killed you, how to build your own, like big, you know, whole huge scar piece that you can like build separately and then attach with latex. Um, and yeah, I think, and it's going to be a lot of these same techniques. So when you start reading the wiki how or whatever, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then it has, you know, step four, five, and six after that. Nice. Um, and Aang Moore on uh, Twitch already says, I'm going to do this tomorrow for Halloween. So that's great. And that's Helping great. people. <laughs> yes. And Tayshin, you look fantastic. Can you yes. give us like a slight close up? Like, like a little I bit? A little little real closer. Yeah, there you go. Like, I wish I had time to get in a mirror and do it better, but I right. love this. So much. <laughs> I think I'm going to go to Walmart later dressed like Just this. Like yes. I, hopefully then people will finally stay six feet away from you. That there it smoke. is. There it is. <laughs> My favorite, one of our favorite makeups we did, this was at uh, DCC. So like the second year or something, we were doing the, uh, Sarah, our Kakashi, was the character from Prometheus. And, and she had the thing pulled out of her. So she's in like the bikini with the blood all over and we made the fake wound. And then she had to go down to 16th street to get lunch for everybody at the table. <laughs> and like, it was only the second year. So people were not used to not costumes. quite. They didn't so know what was going on yet. We had three people stop and offer to take her to the hospital. <laughs> that is an effective makeup. Right. I was I like, did. thank you. <laughs> I did a Lara Croft one year, but I went Lara Croft like after she's had the crap beat out of her. Mm. And it was the same thing. People even in the lines were asking if I was okay. And I thought, do you know where you're at? <laughs> You've got your dual pistols like on your hips. Like I'm good, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> um, 
Well, Tara, before we let you go, we are asking all of our guests today about five different Halloween questions. Okay. So this is your Halloween lightning round. Right. Um, so when it comes to things that are spooky or things that are like scary and terrifying, which do you prefer? Um, Like to watch like movies and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like being scared, but I like being scared in a way that I know is not going to happen. So like, I don't like like home invasion stories, but I love like, Oh my God, like uh, the the quiet, a quiet place and stuff where I'm mm. like, this is so scary, but in a very different thing than my life. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, not, no, no chance of this. I'm never happening. going to Norway in this for a midsummer festival. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So I love watching that one because I wouldn't be there. <laughs> All right. What about uh, zombies or ghosts and hauntings? Ghosts and hauntings. Zombies. I, I love doing zombie makeup, but other than that, zombies are definitely not my thing. <laughs> okay. Um, what is your favorite horror property, whether it's a, a movie, a game, a book, whatever? Uh, my favorite right now is probably Annihilation, um, which is a movie and a book series by Jeff Vandermeer about this weird messed up place in Florida that you go into and it's weird. <laughs> okay. Annihilation. I'll have to get on that one. And uh, then I love Over the Garden Wall, I mean, the entire other end, like kid feel good Over the Garden Wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what about your favorite, and I guess since you're a cosplayer, uh, specifically your favorite Halloween costume that you've ever done? Um, okay, this one is not actually mine, but I did the makeup for this. The year Paranormal Activity 2 came out, which mm -hmm. I will spoil it for you, but if you don't know the character from Paranormal Activity 1, it, like the two movies happen at the same time. So mm -hmm. the end of one is that she kills her boyfriend. And then the end of two, she shows up and wipes out the family. And you're not expecting that. And we had a friend who looked just like her. So, and we had already seen it by Halloween. We'd seen it like right away. So Halloween night, we dressed said friend up like her. We went downtown to the theater on 16th street. And about five minutes before the end, we all went out and stood in the lobby with her, like hunched over with all the blood on her stomach and stuff. I'm so sad it was before we had cameras because it would have been got like people just walked out and would like scream and run back. Oh my God. I never like, it was the coolest thing I've ever done. Like, the unsuspecting audience. And it was, oh like, man. We did it the last minute, it was like barbecue sauce and ketchup on her stomach. Like we literally were like, get some boxers, get a tank top, let's go. That's how I love the, the pulled together. Like we got this, we got this, let's make it work. Um, and then what is your favorite Halloween treat, candy, drink, whatever? Oh my gosh. I love them all. Obviously. No, um, I think I really love candy apples, like mm -hmm. um, both eating them, but also like how they look, the process of making them. I think they're my favorite. They're beautiful, but then yeah. you bite into it and like, how do, how do I, how do I, right, how do I actually, do and, and, then, and then like when they make them with the super, super sour ones, I'm like, are you, are you trying to encourage me to only eat the sweet parts? <laughs> part? Like, why does this apple taste terrible? But when they're good, when they're good apples and good, they're, they're great. <laughs> well, Tara, thank you so, so much and for showing us these looks and doing the demo and letting us follow along with you. And again, thank you to your models that were ready to go and be zombified and unicornified. Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. There it is. Ninjified sounds better. <laughs> And then one more time, where can people find you uh, after today? So uh, we are pretty much, if you put Atomic Pixies into the search bar of any social media, you're going to get us up. If you get someone else, it's very obviously not us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the other people have gotten our names and there's like an underscore or something. It's really easy to tell which one is the nerdy artist and which one hasn't touched their Twitter in eight years. Um, so social media, but you guys have a, a website or a oh, web yeah, store where we can purchase things. Um, and you can get everything there. Um, also, if you go, if you read comics on Webtoon, we have several titles on there. Uh, Helion is our currently going one. It's called H-E-L-I-O-N. Um, and then we also have a spooky one up there called Isolation and uh, 40 Onaville both have Halloween-y things. So if you're looking for something to read, Very cool. find us on. And you can also find those by going to AtomicPixies.com and then there's a comic page. Um, you don't have to go through Webtoon. Awesome. 
So uh, Atomic Pixies on social media, on their website, and on Webtoon. Um, so once again, for all of you guys watching or listening live or after the fact, thank you for joining us for this session of Pop Street Screen today. We still have two more awesome panels coming up. So in about half an hour, Tajan and I will be joined by Ken Reed, who is the TV guidance counselor. And we'll be talking about Halloween TV in 1990. Um, and you can also check out the schedule to see what else is coming up next and all the things that have already happened, which you can now find on demand on Twitch and YouTube. Um, and you can also subscribe at youtube.com slash pop stream. So the fun, and speaking of that, actually, we're not just doing this here today for pop scream. It's not just Halloween pop stream has new content every week that you can enjoy live or on demand. So make sure again, subscribe at youtube.com slash pop stream, turn on the notifications, give us a like, and if you would like to learn more about Pop Culture Classroom, the nonprofit that's bringing you programming today that brings you Denver Pop Culture Con, um, our mission is to a inspire a love of learning, increase literacy, celebrate diversity, and build community through the tools of popular culture and the power of self-expression. And you can learn more about us at our website, and you can also donate at popcultureclassroom.org. All donations go to programs such as creating uh, issues of Colorful History, which is our history-based comic series for students, creating teaching guides for graphic novels and getting graphic novels into the hands of students, um, doing camps and workshops and providing scholarship for those uh, workshops, as well as providing them at libraries and schools and community centers in the Denver metro area. So definitely check out our website. If you are able to donate, we would definitely appreciate that. Thank you again to Tara and the models. Um, Tajin, you and I will see the rest of our audience in about half an hour with Ken Reed. Yep, you guys. we're going to be there. Thanks, all. <laughs>